What's up everyone? Hi there, Colby Cheese. And it's time for some League of Legends action. Where are the rest of the people here? Oh, they already ran out. Okay, so this is yet another pro game commentary here. I think that's, uh, doesn't even need to be said anymore. <laughs> Pretty much every one of these, it's, it's obviously in the title, is going to be a bunch of very high elo players. So, okay, anything interesting that I am not thinking is standard here. Let's just take a look at what these guys are planning on doing. Wukong, I'm curious where he's going to go. I'm guessing top lane. Yeah, I don't see any reason why not. They are just kind of hanging out here looking for some opportunities to pick up some junglers. Maybe grab the enemy team unsuspecting, but they, uh, they pretty much just put some wards down. That's going to give them a lot of jungle vision. Curious if Ethos here is going to try and do some invasions later on, or if he just wants to be completely prepared with uh, himself as well as the bottom lane for any kind of uh, weird aggression. There we go, a little bit of defensive warding as well from blue team. They want to make sure that uh, they don't get counter jungled also. So this is a, this is something I like to see, and you kind of you kind of notice the difference between uh, you know very high elo and. Uh, much lower obviously is that they go ahead and use several of the wards very early game just to ensure safety in those first crucial couple of minutes where some things can really be turned around big time. Nice help there on the blue buff for Ethos. It's going to give him a great start. It's going to be very good. So Nautilus, one of those amazing ganking champions, especially once he grabs his boots of mobility. So I'm going to be very worried for these guys once that does happen. Already we are seeing some aggression here in the bottom lane as the support nabs him with that chain. Cytosine doesn't look like he's going to get out of this. He's popping his shield. Oh, actually that will just barely land. The final attack is going to take him down. So this is looking pretty bad already losing their AD carry. Hopefully he doesn't lose a lot of creeps. We're going to have to kind of wait for that. But I'm going to head back to the middle lane see if there's anything going on here. Pings in the jungle. We do have some counter jungle going on. Ethos getting really low. Can he survive this? He does take the red buff. That's going to be good. Can he survive? It looks like we got Annie coming in with the stun. That's nice. Where the ignite? Oh my god! And the sonic wave going to put him all the way in place. Flashing over the wall. Getting to safety and getting out of there with that red buff and the kill. What a nice play all around. That was just so superb. Like almost magically done in fact. And on top of that, Annie now walks straight into Sun Tzu. And that's going to put him down with a flash. That's going to be the kill. Egg form right outside of the turret range. Allowing Sun Tzu to get out of there safely with the anti-kill. Holy crap, this game is already action-packed. And that is what I like to see. So moving back down to the bottom lane. We've got Ezreal back. See if he can go ahead and hang in there. Um, while we're looking at this, let's just go ahead and match things up properly. That way we have it uh, all set up. So... Uh, Varus, just a few CS up, nothing massive right now, but uh, this creep away right here could actually make a big difference. He's going to have a lot of extra CS, but there's the aggression, knowing that he has a creep advantage. Sadazine wants to put a little bit of pressure, wasn't able to do a ton of damage, but we'll, we'll let him know that he is going to be putting the pressure on. Going to put these supports down at the bottom, okay, they're already there. Going to put AP mid, and we'll put jungle right there. All right, good to go. Let's take a look in the mid. We got a ping. I'm not sure what they're talking about here. Nothing crazy going on. Lots of aggression in the bottom lane, so I'm going to keep my eye on that. There we go. He's going to play safe until his cooldown comes back up. What is the name of this? Uh, is this Flay? Oh, it's Death Sentence. So his chain hook thing is Death Sentence. I, uh, I remember playing with that thing, and it's it's kind of it kind of felt odd to me because it has like a double pull effect. It's kind of weird. And there it is, the gank from Lee Sin. He's gonna try and come in from the bush on the lane side. Doesn't look like a lot is happening. They do get their health very low, so that's gonna oh war jump going in for the tower dive. First blood, second blood. Well, not second blood, but uh, double kill, so I should say. One kill, two kill. All right. You're following me. You're following me. Very nice. This Lee Sin is just juking all over the place. That is definitely a level of play that I have not seen from many Lee Sin players lately. Very well done. Looks like Love Shock here is going to be heading backwards after shoving the lane. A lot of damage is going to be coming in from those creeps. 
And that's going to give him time to come back. Jace doesn't lose all of it, though. He does get back just in time to pick up some of those. Looks like Annie is falling behind as well after that first kill from Anivia. She's going to have to make up some ground, definitely. And being two levels behind with Sun Tzu now level 6, able to use that, uh, whatever the hell it's called, <laughs> Glacial Storm. That's going to be pretty sick. So hopefully he can catch up here. Oh, we have Lee Sin coming in for the gank. He's decided to stay in the lane here. He doesn't have a ton of mana to actually make a lot happen, but if Lee Sin comes in there and he has his ultimate ready, which he does, this could be the kill, and that's all it takes. Wasn't much to it. He had the ward just there. Sun Tzu was able to tank just enough turret but not die, and now he'll be heading back to the base with Andy losing even more farm in the lane. That's going to put her in a really bad situation. I have... Uh, I have to say, man, like, blue team is just dominating because of this Lee Sin right now. He has been their entire life force. And let's see if it continues that way or not. Pink War going to be removing the vision there. Give him a little bit more map control for now. This gives them the ability to kind of move up. Ethos was looking for a chance to do a lane gank, but it's going to back off. They are getting aggressive anyways. And nice chain... Not going to matter, Bai doesn't get pulled too far from that. And that's what I was talking about with the, the double pull effect. It always feels weird to me when I play that champion. He is one of the stronger supports from what I can tell in the game. But uh, but overall, just playing him, I'm like, ah, I hate that little... Get over here! Why aren't you pulling all the way to me? That's, that's what I always feel like whenever I do that. These chains, man, they are landing. He, I feel like this guy should be playing some Blitzcrank with those kind of hooks. Feel like I can't take my eye off of this bottom lane. So much aggression happening from both sides. I think Andy's gonna be grabbing this blue buff. Yep. I'm not sure why he was pinging back. I don't know if Ethos was like, give me that! I need it! But Annie definitely did. She needs all the XP and uh, ability to catch back up as she can. She's really far behind in that mid lane from those ganks. I feel kind of like she should not have died from that first one. Getting completely surprised by him coming around by that way, but she should have known that he was at least in that direction. So maybe just a, a bad judgment call on his part earlier on in the game. Now red buff being stolen. I'm not sure if he realizes that... I don't know if he saw Ethos running around or if... He just has all the confidence in the world right now. Seems like he does. He's going to be taking all these jungle creeps. Now with the Ethos here, he might actually pick up himself another kill. He's two levels higher, kicking him back, not letting him run away as much as he can. He still is quite tanky, so I think he can get away with the help of Annie here. There's a stun and a little bit more damage. Flash being... Oh my god! And the Sonic Wave pulling itself out. Whoops! I skipped way too far forward. Here we go, we can just watch it again. So there it is. Boom. Very nice. This uh, Lee Sin is very good at uh, landing those sonic waves and then not using his uh, the resonating strike until they have gotten way out of range. So he kind of he kind of gave himself the ability to escape and get the kill at the same time. Wyper once again getting destroyed by Anivia. This is terrible for Red Team. They are just getting completely demolished right now. I don't know if they're gonna have a chance to come back from this one. It's gonna be very difficult. They're gonna definitely need to have their top lane. Um, make up for some some of the stuff that Lee Sin's been doing here. Wukong seems to be doing decent for now. He's actually... Oh, I have this mixed up, don't I? There we go. So, he's actually behind in CS, though. Now that I'm looking at it. That is unfortunate. We'll see if he actually keeps up the pressure. Uh, he does seem to be keeping it at Jace's turret. If he can grab the turret, that might help them out, but otherwise it's not going to really make that big of a difference. Nivia having all the time to herself here in the mid. No problem at all with the help of Lee Sin. Curious if we're going to see a dragon skirmish soon. Potentially could in the next couple of minutes. Wards are placed out. So Ethos doesn't have much of a jungle left to go to. <laughs> this Lee Sin, man. He is uh, beast moding right now. Look at that. Already four kills up. No deaths. Looking for some more opportunities to make plays. And there it is. Already onto the Andy once again. There's the ultimate resonating strike. 
And the kill goes to Sun Tzu. Perfect. I don't see how this can get any worse for Annie right now. There's just no way she can handle the mobility from this Lee Sin. I mean, he's coming out so fast that she really doesn't have any time to respond at all. Ito's going to try and defend this turret as much as possible, doing all he can to destroy these creeps, but he just does not have a lot of damage right now. And now he's going to get Tower Dove into the stun. Mr. Impossible grabbing the kill, jumping off safely, no problem. And they will be taking this turret here. Since he's got just enough mana to go ahead and finish off the creeps. And it looks like this next creep wave might actually finish off the turret. Unless any gets there in time. As we have Sun Tzu running up to the top lane. He could be going for a gank. Is the Flash going to avoid the Shock Blast? But Sun Tzu could potentially grab the skill here. Ward over the wall to see that. And I don't think Love Shack's getting away from this one. Oh man, nice play there with the decoy. Probably expected. He's going to die to one person. There's not much you can do to get out of this one. <laughs> Just take it like a man. And down he goes. Mr. Impossible, and meanwhile, getting another kill down bottom. Let's take a look at that. So we're going to skip backwards. Here it is, coming in from the lane. Ultimate from Ezreal, hitting. Barrier goes off. Doesn't matter. Mr. Impossible waiting for the shield to go down before using his damage combo. Grabbing the kill easily. Now Bowie on the way, trying to chase down League of Legends here. The supports. Thresh. Whatever you want to call him. <laughs> the Grim Reaper. The Grim Reaper has fallen! There is no death! I am death! That is what uh, Lee Sin would be saying right now, at least. <laughs> and that's gonna be an easy dragon kill for them now, with all of bottom lane down. Annie not really a threat at all. She is pushing past the turret in an attempt to at least take advantage of the fact that they are definitely doing that dragon. She's gonna do all the inner power to make some plays here, but now she is taking a little bit too much time to do so, giving another free kill to Sun Tzu. I almost feel like she's given up at this point. This is just going terribly. What a one-sided battle. Blue team completely ahead, look at that. Several thousand gold. I just, uh, I don't know, whenever I get up against an opponent like this Lee Sin, it, it makes me sad inside when that happens against me. I mean, it, it's, it's beautiful to watch, but to be on the brunt end of that, uh, it's just, it just, it just makes you want to die. Sadazin still being pressured out here. Luckily, the bottom lane here for red team is not doing terribly. They are uh, just slightly up on CS, AD carry wise, but uh, only one kill up. Not gonna be a huge lead, but the main thing is you're not falling behind, I guess. Up top, we do have a kill on to Jace. Let's go ahead and take a look at how that actually happened. Seems like a little bit of aggression from Jace. Getting punished there, ultimate goes off. Love Shack getting knocked back. Doesn't matter, Ignite is off, and all he needs is the dash. Easily pulled off. I don't know what is up with his staff there. It's got like a little weird blue stuff on it. Some kind of graphical glitch with the replay, I'm guessing. Mr. Impossible just waiting for his time to run over. Jumping to the ward. Goes for the resonating strike. Doesn't land. There's the chain, gonna hold him in place. Just long enough to get him out of there. He's gonna wait for his cooldowns to come back up. Look for a chance to strike in just a second. They are pretty sure that he's gonna be there, at least I would think so. Let's, let's hope they don't make any crazy mistakes here. And he will. Support sticking all by himself there. Mr. Impossible coming out, as expected. Chain goes out, missing. Not going to make a difference. Artriok going to be doing big damage to this Janna. Gets the kill. The wall goes out. And League of Legends just barely staying in there. Mr. Impossible not able to chase. Is going to have to back off. But the ultimate comes off. Just barely brushing past League of Legends. Not able to get that kill with the flash into the auto attack. Salazin grabs the kill. What a nice play overall. Atriok trying his best to stay alive behind the turret, but now it's a 2v1 situation into a tower dive with lots of creeps. There's the double kill, and Salazin coming away happy about that one. Thank you, Mr. Impossible. Now it's going to be a free turret with lots of creeps there. Going to be lost into the next one if they can't get the creeps back in time. Or sorry, if they can't get back to the lane in time. Sun Tzu trying to do some juggling, but it's not going to happen with Sun Tzu coming in here. Sorry, Ethos trying to do some juggling with Sun Tzu coming in here. Uh, not going to make it very easy for him to do so. So he's going to go ahead and leave that wolf alone. It's going to force him to lose even more XP. Level 8 to 12, 4 levels behind. Annie as well, only level 9. Missing her Fire Blast, or whatever it's called. Stun not going off. 
Perfect knockup timing on there, not allowing him to actually pop that uh, second activation. Now that Egg Form has gone down, that does save him because Mr. Impossible has time to come in there with the shield. There's the flash into the wall. They have to flash over it to survive, and that actually puts them in a good position. Chain goes in to try and lock down Mr. Impossible. Not going to be the person you want to be able to lock down because he's got so much mobility. Not going to ma matter at all. Wow. So many awesome plays this game. But all of them really are centering around this Lee Sin. Big ultimate coming down on the Sun Tzu. Now that his egg has been popped, all he needs is one more cooldown. But the exhaust goes down into a stun. He looks like he's going to be safe, but nope. Here comes the Spider-Man. Ethos going for the kill. And still, Sun Tzu is able to get out with the help of Lee Sin. And a wall well placed to keep him back. There's the Janna Tornado. A lot more crowd control. Making sure nobody is able to escape safely here. Ethos using a spider grab to get out. And they are on the chase. Bulgogi grabs the kill with a shock blast. And he's still going in for more. He wants some action here. Ultrioc not able to get his ultimate fully off onto the entire team there. And he will fall because of that. Sadozine grabbing the kill. Just barely out of there. Jace using the shock blast to still continue putting down poke. Oh wow, I just... Wow, that was weird. There we go. <laughs> Keep pushing the wrong buttons here. League of Legends on the run here. Thresh trying to do all he can to juke. And the flash goes off. Doesn't matter. He's got the Sonic Blast. Our Sonic Wave into the resonating. Over the wall waiting for a chance to get out of here. He's going to need to uh, look for a war chance. But Love Shack is not going to make it happen. Does he have his ultimate ready? No, he does not. There's a shutdown. And that is definitely something they needed right now. Red Team very far behind. So much pressure. This game is very fast and action paced. And this is what I like to see in high level E League of Legends matches. So, right now, Blue Team has pretty much the entire map to themselves. They have the whole game. And Red Team is going to have to make some miracles happen if they want to come back from this one. It's certainly possible, but they're going to have to play very carefully and look for an opportunity where Blue Team just makes a grave mistake. It could happen. It does a lot. But at this point, I'm going to have to give the game to Blue Team unless something turns around soon. This is supposed to be like um, some kind of, uh, what is this skin? I've never seen this one. <laughs> it's boss. All right, some more, uh, some more attempts to make something happen here. The wall going down onto both team members, but I don't think it really matters. It's not like it's doing a lot of damage, to be honest. Jace does get taken down quite a bit. However, he should be fine after these health potions take away just a bit. A lot of pressure coming in. They want to grab this tower. We have Mr. Impossible right over the wall with the ward. Going to look for an opportunity. He might actually use his kick here. Love Shock gets a nice kill off with his ultimate. They weren't able to actually deal with that. And the double comes in. Jenna goes down. Sun Tzu now in trouble with Ethos on his tail. Trying to lock him down with as much possible. Here we go. A lot of auto attacks coming in. He's attacking really fast. He gets the third kill with a shutdown on Sun Tzu. Mr. Impossible now trying to get away. Using the ward to jump to his minions. Or sorry, to his ward. Oh my god. Now he's going back in for the kill. He knows he's going to die anyways. Now there's four kills for Love Shock. And that's putting... Wukong in a really good position at 8 kills. Now being pressured by Setazine. He doesn't care. He's going back in for the ace. That's 5 kills for Love Shock. And this is what I'm talking about. That's what Red Team needed to turn this game around. And that was... Wow. Holy crap. Wukong showing how to do it. Damn. That is how you be some Wukong right there. That is some man mode monkey. <laughs> The Planet of the Apes, baby! Look at that. Awesome. So what is he up to now? He's got himself Black Cleaver into a Hex, Double Doran, and a Giant. Oh my goodness. Look out, Red Team is coming back. But they are still not in the clear. Several gold down. About 5k exactly. On top of that, Lee Sin still really strong. Pretty much just as strong as he is now in that, in that sense. Um... Woo! Crazy, crazy, crazy. Let's take a look at the items once again here. Lee Sin with lots of mobility. That is one thing he has going for him. Chain coming in, not sure what it's trying to attempt. What the heck? Alright. 
just lost control of the uh, the game there. Okay, we're back. That was weird. It was like my mouse all tabbed itself. It was really annoying. All right, Ethos going for the engage. Nice ultimate coming in from Atrox, getting two members. Ultimate comes in, low shock, doing big damage, takes down Jace. Does he have enough left for the rest of the team though? Big damage coming in from Sun Tzu. Now that he is cornered all by himself, they are able to pick up Thresh, but that is only the support. The damage is still in place. What is going on with my game? Okay. Gummy bear, is that what it said? <laughs> That's what it sounded like. All right. So uh, this is looking good. Red team doing a nice job of uh, sticking together as a team. Once they got together, oh, there's the flash into the stun. And down goes the AD carry. That's going to give them a chance to grab a free mid turret. All right. What a legendary comeback. Red team is getting closer and closer to evening this back up. Are we going to see a Baron soon? I don't know. This is something I would like to, like to have eyes on. I think blue team is going to have to regroup and uh, realize that they are up against worthy opponents. It's not going to be as an as easy of a win as they had first thought. They had the early game, you know, the, the lanes, the one-on-one, two-on-one advantages going for themselves. But once they got into the team fights, that's when they started to buckle. And uh, it seems like Red has the team fights on lockdown right now. Don't know if that's going to continue, though. They are still looking for every opportunity to capitalize on the mistakes of Blue. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You never know if a game's going to be completely over. A lot of people, given the circumstances of the early parts of this game, would have already given up. Red Team making you uh, really rethink that strategy. We're going to be getting a red buff for AD carry here, giving him a little bit of extra damage in the next fight. Let's see if that pays off or not. Atriox trying to get some poke in from long range. A little bit of damage on to the supports. Wiper ready to go. Uh, looks like he's trying to build up his stun. He's still got a few more spells to go for that. Should be coming up for the next fight, hopefully. He's charging up as fast as possible. You can see he's popping that, that defensive stance. He's got to get that ready because the fight is about to break out. This turret is going to be going down really soon. Ezra using ultimate to clear out the creep waves. They really want to get this turret as fast as possible. Nice poke coming in. That's going to push out Atriox. Their AD carry now behind. That's going to be a free turret for them. And uh, overall, poke wins out. So, Varus versus Ezreal. Hmm. Curious how... Or, sorry. Curious who's going to be stronger coming into the late game. I feel like Ezreal is going to have the advantage here. But Varus has some great utility if he can get a nice ultimate off into some of these team fights, Followed up by a lot of the AoE from the rest of his teammates. Yeah, you punch that minion. Mr. Impossible. Ah, gotta love that. I do like that skin. I know a lot of people don't. I do. All right. Looks like Mr. Impossible is about to go in for the engage. Using that ward. Thinking he was going to jump to it. But realizing that his positioning was not optimal. Decided to go ahead and stand back. I think he was actually hoping that they would walk forwards. And then he would go for it. Oh, there he is. A little bit of uh, poke damage. Using the Nimbus Strike to go in, and then the Decoy to run back away. Pretty standard. Pretty standard. It is a little bit risky if you're uh, if you're not careful. You could mess that up just a little bit, but he did a good job. And he has the stun ready. Is she going to be able to use it to full effect? Stunning Mr. Impossible. That's probably what he wanted. He's tanky enough to actually handle that. Here comes Wukong. Getting in the middle of about two people. Getting that ultimate off. Didn't get full effect on it, but it is a little bit of damage. It's going to force him to regroup just a little bit. Full force, red team coming in, trying to make some plays happen. Mr. Impossible getting really low. Can he get down? Nice Spider-Man grab. Ethos grabbing that kill. Sun Tzu now all by himself. Going to go down very soon as well. Oh my god. And there's a shutdown somewhere else. What is happening over here? Wukong kind of chasing there by himself. Bowie and Sun Tzu. Oh my god. Didn't see him coming out of that bush. Atrog now on the chase. Sun Tzu goes down to Thresh. So nice job. Can Atrog can, uh, catch back up here? I don't think so. There's a tornado. Going to push him back. But we have the nice move speed, but this is going to be a pincer move here. I don't know. It's going to be a little bit risky. They want to go in for the kill here. There's enough damage. If they'll tank in the turret, and that's going to be the rest of the kills. Double kill now for the jungler. And this is starting to look really nasty 
as Red Team is catching ever closer up. They only lost Wukong in that last engage, taking down all five of Blue Team. And oh my god, this, uh, this team comp right here is just doing so well. They are engaging perfectly. I think that Red Team could come back now and win this game if Blue cannot figure out a way to win these team fights. They're either gonna have to split things up, they're gonna have to bait out uh, one of the, you know, one of the red team members to kind of come out. They seem to be doing really well in kind of one-on-one -on -one engages, but whenever they group everything up together, the combination of everything that the red team has to offer is just too much for what Blue can do right now. Blue going to Sun Tzu, Blue buff. That is obviously scouted out. Not gonna make a big difference though. Thresh coming in, looking for an opportunity to make a play. Chain hits Sun Tzu. Can Love Shock make a play before he gets away? It looks like he's gonna play it safe and just head back. Doesn't have any there. They're gonna make it safe and go towards the dragon now that it is up. We could have a full on engage here. This is definitely gonna be a contested dragon fight. Lee Sid coming in for the engage. Trying to make a play, puts a ward down. Now they have vision. Thresh has to back off. Shock Blast doing some good damage. Ultimate lands. Ezreal's gonna have a little bit of attack speed. He needs to keep on attacking if he wants to continue that. He's gonna lose his speed, but the engagement is happening. Sun Tzu getting really low. Flash is over. That's gonna save him. Love Shock not getting a lot of use out of that ultimate. That could be what Blue Team needs to actually win this engage, but if they're still on the run, Ethos is gonna push out the AD carry. He's not gonna be able to finish off the important targets here. Spider-Man grab gonna go back in. Bulgogi goes down. Almost taking out Wiper. And he makes it out safely though. Ethos is still waiting for his cooldown. He wants to get another grab. Decides to actually back off. Lush Shock might be a little bit too greedy. Nope. He does grab the kill. And it could get away. Yes. And the tornado doesn't take him down. That's actually going to save him. Let's see. I don't think he needed it. But the Hex Dragon does go off to kind of give him that extra bit of shield against magic damage. Really well done right there. They did lose two people. But uh, overall, uh, three taken. And they did grab the dragon. So right now, they are still behind on gold but i have to say they're pretty much coming back to the game now what i would like to see is uh they're gonna need to pick up these turrets if they really want to catch back up and i think that's a big part of the gold as well because uh right now blue team still has that early game advantage of taking off all three front turrets plus the second middle and uh when you add up the global gold advantage that you get from three turrets up that is a big difference and that's probably a lot of this uh three cool 3k uh, advantage that you're seeing right now so while Red Team is continuing to win these engagements, uh, they're not really making a lot of headway and pushing down turrets, and that's what we're really gonna have to see. Um, I'm pretty sure that Blue Team, if they if they um, if they keep losing these fights, yeah, obviously they're gonna eventually lose. But Red Team really needs to start pushing forward and making more than just fights happen, and they're gonna need to to get some map control and some map objectives, mainly those turrets. All right. I still have confidence. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Very exciting game so far. Nice job with the grab, but the blink happens just perfectly, just like with the blitz grab, pulling himself out of harm's way. If Ethos was able to land an auto attack, that would have locked him down long enough for them to actually engage on that. But uh, that is how critical timing is in this in this particular match. I think tensions are high right now. One mistake is all it's gonna take. They're kind of splitting up just a little bit to go for creeps. Let's see if that's going to make a big difference or not. Love Shot going in for an ultimate. There it is. How much of that is actually going to land? It's going to hit a little bit on Sun Tzu. Bit of poke damage. They're going to be regrouped here. Everyone kind of pushed back just a bit. And another grab hits onto the right target. Sun Tzu going to get really low. Gets taken down very fast. Mission Impossible, or Mr. Impossible actually, is going to try and get out of there with the last remaining bit of his health. Everyone is on the chase. They are splitting up just a bit to try and continue pushing these creeps down while trying to pick up a kill on the least end, but he is very mobile. Are they gonna be able to get this? He might actually um, put them on a wild goose chase for no apparent reason. Is he gonna flash over this wall or what? Oh, he's going over the wall. Wow, look at this escape. Mr. Impossible says, screw you guys. Let's get out of here. They should have just stopped that chase a long time ago. I think they could have uh, made a lot more happen there. At least they would have had to teleport out eventually anyways, which is obviously what he's doing now. Man, those jukes. Holy crap. I feel like we can make an entire highlight reel just from this one game alone. Make like a freaking Lee Sin montage from this game, you know? <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Let me take a swig of water. I'm dying here. 
You don't want me to get that raspy throat, do ya? I'll be doing my commentaries like this. Hey guys, it's Kobe Cheese, and uh, I've been talking all day, and uh, <laughs> oh, that actually makes it worse. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, sorry. Got, I gotta act silly every once in a while. <coughs> that was a really bad idea. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> so, these guys are now almost even on kills. Still, though, look at that gold advantage. That is what I'm seeing. Is uh, We have um, a difference in creep score and those three turrets. That is uh, certainly a big part of this. Even though the CS isn't massively in their favor, just a little bit. I think mostly those turrets, so we'll see. We'll see how it starts to even up as the game gets moving. As far as items, that's really the, the main thing is, like, do these guys have several in-game items built up? Ramana, ooh, that's going to be sick. Chase going to be doing a lot of damage. So is Ezreal, same, pretty, same principle, really. Ah, oh, man. Gotta hate that. Iceborne Gauntlet on a, an Ezreal. Every time he shoots that long range. Ah. Oh. Whew, you're slowed down. So annoying. So let's take a look at what is about to happen. Looks like things are getting back to the point where blue team wants to pressure these guys. Red was playing it defensively, picking up their jungle creeps. Trying to push out some stuff. Ghosts on the chase, looking for their enemies. They have discovered the blue team there. Gotta love that item. Chain goes out, going into the bush, trying to find someone for a, uh, a hopeful grab. He didn't know they were there, but uh, if he had landed that on somebody, that could have potentially been game-changing. Mr. Apostle goes for the engage here, using the ward to jump in. Not able to actually make anything happen just yet. A little bit of extra damage. Ethos probably going in just a little bit ahead of his team, maybe making the wrong decision there. Thresh locks down Mr. Impossible, but most of the damage dealers are in the back and they're safe. Double kill for Jace. I think this could be the mistake that blue team was waiting for to turn it back around in their original favor. Now on the run, red team is going down slowly here. All the damage dealers still up. Love Shock not able to really do much to Sun Tzu here. I think he still has his egg form. He's not going to be able to finish that off. Shut down by Ezreal. And they've only lost their Jace here. All but Thresh have gone down. And Thresh is extremely low. He's actually going to die. Janna Tornado takes him down in the ace. Holy crap, Mr. Impossible has done the impossible. And completely carried this game. Wow. This is ridiculous. I think that could be the win. That one fight there has given blue team, now that they've already taken, they've, I mean, they've had down all the turrets and they had all the momentum from the creeps, it allows them to go all the way in and take down the inhibitor easily without any pressure. And they're gonna safely come back. They're probably gonna go back to base now. And they may even head straight up to the Baron after that. They have a lot of time. Red team could potentially go straight for Baron as well, though. So that is something to think about. Oh, looks like a lot of them have been deprived of their ability to actually get back. They're gonna... Oh, Mr. Paulson, you gotta get out of there. Spider-Man coming in. A little bit of lockdown. Luckily, Janna is there. Oh, no, actually, there's the ward. Put the ward right over there. Man, he is fast with those wards. He has got that stuff down to a science. Ethos wanting to start this Baron fight. I don't know if this has vision of the... Oh, what the... Oh. I was trying to hit F1. I hit number one instead. Uh, so they do have vision of this happening. Oh, I thought that pink ward was uh, red teams. I was wondering why he was not attacking it. Why can I not see the whole map? Okay, there we go. Anyways. So red team now kind of stuck inside here. Sun Tzu doing so much damage. Atriox is not going to be able to do much at all in this fight. And I think this is pretty much the end of red team. And the Baron stolen. Mr. Impossible jumping in there. Taking that no problem. Wasting the time of red and losing this fight. That is going to be GG as far as I'm concerned. I don't see any way out of that. <laughs> Janna down. He's like, well, if I'm going to go down, I'm going to take one of you with me. Triple kill for Sun Tzu. That is... Just unfortunate right there. And uh, I can't say it's more lightly or or I can't say it enough that uh, Mr. Impossible MVP of the last 10 games that I've watched. <laughs> he wasn't even in the last couple of games I watched, but he was the best player in those games too. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is GG. I don't, I don't see any way out of it. Blue team now has the Baron buff. Only one turret down. 
uh, from the perspective of Red Team. I mean, they, they had a chance. They were coming back, but they just could not keep the momentum going in their favor. And all it took was that one team fight loss. And, uh, you know, all of their early game worries, they were, it was just right back there to, to haunt them. I think if Red Team was able to hold out a little bit more in the early game, if Lee Sin didn't make such a huge impact, they might have had a much easier chance of winning this game. Alright, Ezreal sticking around a little too long. Might delay the game just a bit. Blue Team is going to have to just head back and regroup a little bit. However, at this point, with the inhibitor down, Red Team is going to stay on the defensive. Blue team has the chance to run in here and grab all of the buffs, as you can see they've already done. Uh, they can grab Dragon if they choose to. Jace can do that with the help of Janna. With or without, to be honest, but <laughs> you get the point. Let's take a look here at uh, kind of the in-game items. Look at that, man. What a sick game. Oh, and here we go. Thresh is potentially going to uh, put himself in a bad situation. He's trying to ward this, but that's not going to help him too much. She's going to let them uh, come back here, get some free gold from that. Hello, free ward. 25 gold goes to Lee Sin, as if it matters at this point. I don't think he's going to go back to buy anything when this game ends. Blue buff going down. Sun Tzu's going to have that. They have all the advantages that they need to finish this up. I think they're just going to be waiting on some super minions to come in. They might actually follow up on that wave of creeps there. So let's find out what is going to happen in the next fight. Is Red Team going to be able to at least uh, make up for some of the stuff that's happened? I don't know. Alright, Wukong cannot get caught here. This is... This is... Uh... Alright, and he does get stuck by the wall into a stun. Frostbite slows him down. Mr. Impossible missing the Sonic Blast. Wiper goes in for an engage trying to pick up the Ezreal. Not able to do enough damage to kill him. He flashes all the way back. Goes off with the ultimate Mr. Impossible picking up Wukong. A lot of their damage now gone. Wall coming in. Is it going to be enough to help him slow him down enough? Atriox trying to get off the damage he can. It's just not enough. All of blue team still alive. Red on the run. And I think with all of the super minions in the base, that is going to be GG. One of the best games I've seen in a very long time. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching this with me. <laughs> you just got jaced. <laughs> All right, I'll see you around for the next one. Hit that next button if you want to see some more awesome commentaries. I'll see you around, guys. It's Kobe Cheese. Peace out.